probably you're watching this video since you want to learn how to plot the data using GNU Octave. I think you find a right place and please continue to watch. Plotting data is a very important technique to understand the data by visualizing them and hope this tutorial video is useful for you. During this video, I will go over the plotting basics, a step-by-step -step approach to plot scatter data, linear and polynomial curves, and sinusoidal curves. At the end, I will also show you how to customize ticks. Here are the timestamps for the each topic and you can directly go to the part that you want to watch. Without further ado, let's jump right in. To the plot is a visualizing data to understand relationship between two variables, such as y versus x. The way to plot is to locate the data point y at given data x in y versus x plane. For example, if you want to plot x equal to 1, y equal to 2, you can look at your data at y equal to 2 at x equal to 1 as shown in the graph. Each data point can be represented by marker, and in this case, we use red solid circle. If you have a multiple data points, for example, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 6, 1, you can continue to add the data point to the graph. If you do not connect the data point with line, we call it scatter plot. If you show the data point by connecting with line, it is called a line plot. Oftentimes, you do not need to show the marker for each data point. In this section, I will walk you through how to visualize the data as a scatter plot. As an example, I will plot a single pair of data 1,2 as well as multiple data points 1,2, 3,4, and 6,1. To plot these data, I will use a built-in function plot. Plot function requires the individual coordinate for x and y as a single numeric number or multiple numbers as a vectors. For a single data point, you can directly use a number or a variable, and for multiple data points, you can use the same size of vectors. Now I want to plot 1,2 in y versus x plane. The first step will be to create the variable x and y for 1,2. and type plot x comma y. You can see the figure window. Unfortunately, you cannot clearly see the data point in the figure window since the plot function visualizes the data as a line plot using a default setting. Actually, you can see the data in the blue tiny point in the center of the figure, but this is not what you want to do. To change it to the scatter plot, you need to start customizing the property. You can customize a plot property such as a color, marker type, and line type, and size, etc. by adding additional arguments. The property can be changed using the combination of the single character and symbols. The possible list of the single character and symbols are given in the tables. And you can find the further information in the description below. Here, I will plot the data as a red empty circle by adding OR in the third argument. O means the empty circle as a marker, R represents red color. It does not matter to swap the sequence, and the octave will pick up without having problems. So then I can start adding OR. Now you can see the single point scatter plot for 1,2. We'll talk about the other option for the property later. Moving on to plotting multiple data points, you need to provide the x and y coordinate as a vector. Since you have x coordinate of three data points, 1, 3, 6, and corresponding y coordinates to 4, 1, we can build my variable x as a row vector using square bracket by typing x equal to 1, 3, and 6. If you want to learn more about how to build the vectors, you can review my other tutorial video. Similarly, you can update the variable y as a row vector, so you can type y equal to 2, 4, and 1. Then type plot x, y, followed by the property. Now you can see scatter plot. Now I'd like to improve the figure format by increasing the marker size, 
adding X label and Y label, grid and title and line size control the X and Y range. First of all, I need to increase the marker size since it is too small to read clearly. We can increase the marker size to 12 point by adding another property control marker size followed by 12 for the font size. Now you can see the increased marker size in the new figure. Secondly, I would like to add the grid for the major tick on X and Y axis. The grid can be added by using grid on. Now you can see the grid on the figure. If you want to remove it, you can type grid off. Now it disappears. Now I turn back on. Next, I would like to add the title on the top portion of the figure as a plot Y versus X. We can use a title function with the title text. To use it, we can start with title, single quotation plot Y versus X. Now you can see the title on the top portion of the figure. To increase the text font size, you need to use set function. The set function requires the first parameter for which figure you want to control. I will use GCA for the first parameter, which means that you want to control the currently active figure. Then you can use a property name as a string followed by the property value. I will increase the font size to 24. Similarly, we can also add the X and Y label by using label functions. I would use X label variable X and Y label variable Y. Now your figure looks much better. Lastly, I would like to customize lower and upper bound on X and Y axis. You can use axis function. This function requires a vector having lower bound and upper bounds of X and Y axis. The first two elements are lower and upper bounds of X axis and the last two are for the Y axis. I would like to show only 0 to 7 on the X axis, 0 to 5 on the Y axis. In this section, I will show you how to plot the linear and polynomial curves as a line plot. As an example, I will plot y equal to 0.5x plus 1 for x from minus 2 to 2 and add the second line plot y equal to x squared for x from 0 to 2 to the same figure window. The basic idea on the line plot is the same as a scatter plot. However, since the relation between y versus x is already known through the given functions, you can generate the data points through the given relations. Question comes how to generate the data for x and y. Typically, you can start with the x data as a vector, followed by generating vector y using given relation between x and y. To plot the curve, I would like to generate the vector x from minus 2 to 2 with the enough data points. The more data points you have, the smoother curve you look. I use vectors x1 and y1 for the first curve and x2 and y2 for the second curve. I will start with five data points. So I use x1 equals lean space minus 2, comma 2, comma 5. And the size of x1 is 1 by 5. Then I generate the vector y1 for the y data using y1 equals 0.5 star x1 plus 1. The x and y data must be the same size vectors. Otherwise, we cannot plot due to the size mismatch. You can use built-in function length to check the size of the vector x1 and y1.
Now you are ready for the data points for the plot. To plot the line curve, you can use plot x1, y1. And you can see the figure window for the straight linear curve. As a default setting, the plot function uses a blue line by connecting the data points. For demonstration purpose, I show where the data points were in the line plot by adding the markers. I add the string bo- to the property argument for both marker and blue line. To add the grid, x label, y label, and title, and the change, the font size, etc., you can use the same command as before. While you're finishing yours, I will finish mine. To add the second curve, you also need the vectors for the second vectors. Similarly, we can generate the vector x2 from 0 to 2 by using x2 equals lean space 0, 2, 5. And again, the size of x2 is a 1 by 5. I start with a small vector size on purpose to show how important the number of data points are. We can increase the number of data points later to show the smoother curve. To create the y data, you can use y2 equal to x2 period hat 2. I just want you to highlight that you need element-wise operator period hat since GNU Octave consider x square without period as a matrix multiplication and it will end up with being error since the inner dimension does not match. In other words, 1 by 5 multiplied by 1 by 5 does not work for the matrix multiplication. All you need is to get each element squared using element-wise operation. Here, the question comes how to add the second curve. In the plot function, you can add the vectors for x and y data points with the property. Now you can add a second pair of the data right next to the first data set with the line property as plot x1, comma y1, comma bo dash, comma x2, y2, comma rx colon. You can see the second curve in the same figure. However, you can see a few kinks because you do not have enough data points, so I increase the vector size to 30. Now you can see the smoother curve. In this section, I will show you how to plot cosine x and cosine x squared with custom ticks. The ticks are the values to show the specific point on the coordinate axis. Plot function uses the numeric value for ticks as a default, but we need to customize them for some functions, like sine and cosine, since we typically use multiples of pi. For the two curves, I use x1, y1 vectors for cosine x, and x2, y2 vectors for cosine x squared. The x1 varies from minus 2 pi to 2 pi, while the x2 begins at minus pi and ends at 2 pi. So I use x1 equals lean space minus 2 pi to 2 pi. and x2 equals lean space minus pi to 2 pi. If you do not specify the size of vector in lean space, the default size is 100, which is good enough size to have smooth curves. I will generate y1 and y2 by using y1 equals cosine x1 and y2 equals cosine x2 square.
Now you can plot two curves in the same figure with specific line properties by using plot function. You can see that the x-axis shows the tick from minus 10 to 10 with the increment of 5. I would like to change them to minus 2 pi to 2 pi with the increment of pi between them. Next, we would like to customize the tick in x-axis. The tick means the major grid point in the figure. Customizing tick needs two steps. The first step is to specify the tick points. The second step is to customize the tick label. In this example plot, we'll control the ticks in the x-axis using the property name x tick for the tick points minus 2 pi, minus pi, 0, and pi, and 2 pi. You can see the changes on the tick in the x-axis, but the tick label shows as a number. Now you need to change the tick labels. To customize a tick label, you need to use the property name x tick label, followed by the label as a string. For a Greek word like pi, you can use a backslash followed by the English character for a Greek word. Here I use minus 2 pi, minus pi, 0 pi, and 2 pi. For the tick labels, since the string should be used as a different type of data structure, we need to use a curly brackets. The figure looks much better than before except the range of x-axis. I would like to limit my range of x-axis from minus 2 pi to 2 pi. Now your figure looks very good. In summary, we went over the basic principle of plotting, followed by three plotting examples including scatter plot and two line plots. All the plots have been done using built-in function plot and data generation and custom plotting style. Hope this tutorial video is helpful. Thanks for watching this video and please subscribe my channel if you haven't done it yet. Thumbs up if you enjoyed. Please feel free to share your thoughts in the comment section below. See you next time.